the brain is a kind of physical system. Now, unless you are willing to believe in supernatural explanations, then this tells us that computers are able to simulate, not even electronic computers, things like the analytical engine, can simulate the functioning of a human brain. And so they should be able to be conscious. Whatever consciousness is, it must be a property of brains, and brains are made of atoms which are performing computations, or at least the neurons are performing the computations. I'm going to skip a little bit more, and David writes up to page 137 now. Babbage and Lovelace also thought about one application of universal computers that has not been achieved to this day, namely so-called artificial intelligence, AI. Since human brains are physical objects obeying the laws of physics, and since the analytical engine is a universal simulator, it could be programmed to think in every sense that humans can, albeit very slowly and requiring an impractically vast number of punched cards. Nevertheless, Babbage and Lovelace denied that it could. Lovelace argued that the analytical engine has no pretensions whatever to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. It can follow analysis, but it has no power of anticipating any analytical relations or truths. The mathematician and computer pioneer Alan Turing later called this mistake Lady Lovelace's objection. It was not computational universality that Lovelace failed to appreciate, but the universality of the laws of physics. Science at the time had almost no knowledge of the physics of the brain. Also, Darwin's theory of evolution had not yet been published, and supernatural accounts of the nature of human beings were still prevalent. Today, there is less mitigation for the minority of scientists and philosophers who still believe that AI is unobtainable. For instance, the philosopher John Searle has placed the AI project in the following historical perspective. For centuries, some people have tried to explain the mind in mechanical terms, using similes and metaphors based on the most complex machines of the day. First, the brain was supposed to be like an immensely complicated set of gears and levers. Then it was hydraulic pipes. Then steam engines. Then telephone exchanges. And now that computers are our most impressive technology, brains are said to be computers. But this is still no more than a metaphor, says Searle, and there is no more reason to expect the brain to be a computer than a steam engine. I'll pause there. And this is, uh, even though an unpopular opinion above philosophers, scientists, academics, people engaged in the debate today, I would still say it's the overwhelming majority of the man on the street who would say that, indeed, it's impossible for a computer to think in the way that people can. And that assuming that a... A, what a brain is doing is a kind of computation is still a metaphor, is, is best thought of as a metaphor. Uh, I think there was a, there's been an article that's been going around recently and to this effect. It sometimes appears in popular science articles and that kind of thing that the brain is doing something special, that the brain can't possibly be a computer. Okay, so let me reread that last bit and continue. This is still no more than a metaphor, says Searle, and there is no more reason to expect the brain to be a computer than a steam engine. But there is. A steam engine is not a universal simulator, but a computer is, so expecting it to be able to do whatever neurons can is not a metaphor. It is a known and proven property of the laws of physics as best we know them. And as it happens, hydraulic pipes could also be made into a universal classical computer, and so could gears and levers as Babbage showed. By the way, we should just acknowledge the fact there that when David writes, it is a known and proven property of the laws of physics as best we know them, he proved that. Okay, so that's, that's his proof. So that's the seminal 1985 paper where he shows how the field of computation, what was previously the mathematics of computation, if you like, was in fact a branch of physics because computers are made out of atoms. Atoms obey the laws of quantum theory. So therefore, there can be such a thing as a quantum theory of computation. 